So here's an interesting example um, of two problems or two types of problems um, kind of dovetailing into each other. Uh, so let's read it. Um, shown below, um, block two is at rest on a frictionless surface and it's touching the end of an unstretched spring with some spring constant. The um, other end is fixed to a wall, right? Block one travels at some, some speed, collides with block two, they stick together, and then they, um, they compress the spring until they come to rest, right? And then the spring would push them back um, and they would leave um, together, presumably. Um, so the question is, how far is this spring compressed? Okay, so it might be tempting to just use conservation of energy here and to say, well, what if this initial kinetic energy is all converted into spring potential? And I would say, yes, but there's this collision right here. And in fact, that collision is perfectly inelastic. That collision is perfectly inelastic because they stick together. And we know that in a perfectly inelastic collision, in any inelastic collision, in fact, mechanical energy is not conserved. So, um, so we can't use energy from the beginning to the end, but we can use momentum to figure out how fast the blocks one and two go right after they collide. Um, because momentum is conserved here, but energy is not um, in that collision. But after that collision, when the spring is compressed, then energy is conserved. So we're breaking this into two, um, two steps that kind of dovetail into each other. Uh, so let me erase this and, um, and draw those two things. So we're doing a perfectly inelastic collision. Let me draw a picture. So one is a collision. Um, and in fact, I've got a before and an after for that. Before the collision, here's block one with some like V1 and block two sitting at rest. And then after the collision, they stick together with some V1, two. All right. Um, and immediately after these leave that collision with V12, they start to compress the spring. So then I have this spring compression. Which would be an um, energy conservation problem. So, um, so there's the V12. It's connected to the spring and it's on the wall. Um, and then it compresses the spring by some distance. It's pretty ugly even for me. Right? Um, and here V um, final is now zero. Right, so um, the question is by what distance is the spring compressed? So we're looking for from here to here, there's some delta x. That's the question, right? Or at least the first part of the question. So I have to solve the momentum problem before I can solve the spring problem because I need um, this v12, the final velocity from the collision, to be the initial velocity for the spring compression, right? And that's what I mean by dovetail. I have to do one problem where the final bit of one problem becomes the initial bit of the next problem. Okay, so let's solve that. Let's solve the um, the collision first. So um, in the collision, we're we're conserving momentum. So p initial in the x direction equals p final in the x direction. Uh, okay, so what is P initial? Where well, let's just M1 V1, right? Plus M2 V2, but V2 is zero. And the final uh, momentum is M1 plus M2 times V1 two. Right, so we can solve for V1 two very quickly. Um, let's see, let's plug in the numbers here. Uh, mass one is two kilograms 
times V1 is, oh, sorry. No, 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 that's right. Mass one is, is two kilograms. That speed is four meters per second. Plus zero equals two kilograms plus one kilogram times V12. So V12 turns out to be um, 2.67 meters per second. Okay, that becomes the V um, the V initial for the next problem. So in the next problem, it's the same problem, right? But it's um, it's an energy conservation. Um, we say um, E initial equals E final. And again, initial now is just after the um, collision. So I have a kinetic energy plus spring um, initial equals kinetic final plus spring final. Um, and that's a half M1. Actually, we have both objects moving there, right? Sorry. Uh, so just before the, or just after the collision, we have mass one and mass two moving to the, together. So it should be M1 plus M2 times V12 plus the spring potential. But initially, the spring's not stretched. So the spring potential should be zero. So that's plus zero. Equals K final. Well, K final is also zero because it's not moving afterward, right? It's at rest afterward. So we're turning all of this kinetic energy into spring potential. So we're almost there. Um, that should be the expression for spring potential is half m, and this is m1 plus m2 times delta x squared. OK. Um, so we are, um, again, very close to there. Looks like, oh, I am sorry. I actually screwed this up. Um, it's not masses, right? It's uh, half k delta x squared. Half k delta x squared. Yeah, this makes more sense to me. Okay, so uh, we're at a point where we can plug some numbers in. So there's half times 2 kilograms plus 1 kilogram times that 2.67. That should be squared uh, meters per second squared equals half times 200 newtons per meter times this delta x squared. What I get for delta x is um, 0.3266 meters, which is like 33 centimeters. Um, again, it was 0.3266 meters. OK. OK. Um, so we could ask one more question about this system. We could say. How much energy was lost? How much energy was lost? Um, so that would be um, um, out of space. Let's do it. Let's do it up here. So this this extra bit. What is delta E? So again, for the second part of the problem, delta E is zero. But for the first first to the end, right, from the very beginning to the very end, um, delta E is not going to be zero because there was this collision. So I could say that's going to be um, U final. Well, really, it's E final minus E initial, right? Um, let's buy myself a little more space. So E final minus E initial. And final is all spring potential. Nope. And initial is all kinetic energy. So those are the things I need to plug in. Um, that final, so that's half k delta x squared, which we just found, minus half m1 v initial squared. right? Because before anything happened, we had um, v1 moving. So we're asking uh, between this point and this point. All right, very beginning and very end. Okay, so we can plug into that, um, but I have to move it so that I can. Move that up there. 
so they have one more line. So that's um, half, almost, 200 times that 0.3266 squared minus half, uh, M1 was 2 kilograms times 4 meters per second squared. Uh, and what I get for that is, um, for the spring, it's, uh, Ten point six seven joules. And for for um, the mass one, it's uh, four squared times two divided by two, so it's just four squared, which is sixteen joules. So for the energy change, I get uh, minus five point three three joules. Okay, it's negative. Sometimes we look at a negative and say, "Is that right? Are we sure?" Well, yeah, this is a delta E. It's E final minus E initial. This is an energy lost. So the energy lost should be a negative number if we're, if we're strictly finding delta E. So yeah, 5.33 joules of energy is lost. And we could have actually found that um, from just part one, but it's kind of satisfying to find it from the, um, the very beginning to the very end of the problem.